quite literally seconds away from making it four wins out of four. And I suppose the perfect preseason in terms of results. But no, Callum Chambers comes up. Aston Villa score a 93rd minute equaliser. We throw away a 2-0 lead against Aston Villa. Ah, oh, the world's going to collapse. No, it won't collapse. Just in the same way that the world wasn't getting rebuilt in those first three wins. Overall, it's a game that Eric Ten Hag, I think, will be happy with. Certainly with the first half. The second half, a completely different game. Steven Gerrard putting on Leon Bailey, exposing our weakness down the left with Lindelof and Shaw, and it got exposed. I'll run through the whole game. But four games, three wins, and a draw. Lots of positives to take home from this preseason tour. I really, really think so. And in that first half, I think we saw it again. Great teamwork. Everybody seemed to know what... Everyone seems to know what they're doing in this system. Certainly in the first half. Honestly, like the pitch was absolutely abysmal. It's pretty much going to be the caveat to anything I say for this match reaction. It's like you, you can't prepare for a pitch like that. It, it, you'd be pissed off if you turned up on Sunday League and it was like that. In the second half, it was like it was just a mud. It was just mud everywhere. It was hard to play the Ten Hag style of football. Remember, he likes his grass at 15 millimetres. It was the opposite of what he wants to do. And it won't be what we're getting in the Premier League this season. But both teams had to deal with that. And Aston Villa took advantage of it. But in that first half, with the team that we think we can pretty much guarantee to see, not guarantee all of it, but first game against Brighton, to be very surprised if our front three wasn't Martial, Sancho and Rashford with Bruno behind. Fred in the midfield role. And who's going to play alongside him? We don't know that. But lots of positives in that first half. Good movement from everybody. Uh, something I particularly liked was when there was one moment where Bruno Fernandes won the ball back and it was Jaden Sancho, Anthony Martial and Marcus Rashford all just put the afterburners on and they all ran forward in unison. It's obvious everybody knows what they're doing, especially when we win the ball high up the pitch. Um, uh, in terms of the role of Fred, I think it's become a little bit obvious that Eric Ten Hag, in terms of developing a De Jong role from in internally, it's going to be Fred. Now, Fred is not De Jong. Fred will never be De Jong. That's not why I'm insinuating. But in terms of that player who's going to be the deeper midfielder that, the, that will receive the ball first from defenders, seems like it seems like it's going to be Fred. We may line up in a 4-2-3-1 formation on paper, but when the game starts and the game is on, it's Fred dropping a little bit deeper behind two midfielders. And today, those two midfielders were Donny van der Beek and Bruno Fernandes. And I've got to be honest, uh, the positivity of, Bru uh, of Donny van der Beek's cameo in the last game, I, he didn't do enough today. Donny van der Beek sort of hugged the edge of the opposition box. That's where he's most dangerous. And we've spoken about that quite a lot. But if, if we were comparing the performances of Bruno inside that role compared to Donny van der Beek. Bruno, I think we're, I've really got to praise Bruno for that first half performance. And overall, how he's played in the preseason tour. Somebody who a lot of fans love to, love to criticise last year because of how his performances and his levels dropped. But Bruno, he seems to be playing smarter making the right decisions, using his aggressiveness and his emotion in the right way, bottling it where need to. And as I say, decision-making was much, much better today from Bruno and has been better overall in the preseason tour. And when you compare his performance to Donny van der Beek's performance in terms of how many times he was back there winning the ball, getting involved in the actual build-up play, and yeah, being a pest, Bruno Fernandes was fantastic at that. But Donny van der Beek, the game sort of passed him by. And I don't really think that Donny van der Beek has done enough in these preseason games to keep Christian Eriksen out of the team once Christian Eriksen starts training next week. Uh, Donny van der Beek's got an uphill struggle, but it's down to him. Eric Ten Hag said it. It's up to him. But I think if... Look, I'm not going to come here uh, singing all the positives because there were definite quite a lot of negatives in that game. And I've got to be completely honest. In the first half, I think you saw the, 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 the better part of Luke Shaw's game. The overlapping run, the excellent cutback, good cross. And it, because he knew it was smart from Shaw. He knew that the Villa uh, defenders were expecting us to go low, so he just dinked it over. Luke uh, Sancho, great goal. Party finish. Sancho, he's cooking on gas. He really, really is. But Luke Shaw, right, that's the positives of his game. The, set, the, the weaknesses of his game got exposed. And they got exposed because he's got Lindelof behind him. And Luke Shaw, he's not as good at tracking back as Tyrell Maller. See ya. So at halftime, what did Steven Gerrard do? They threw on Leon Bailey, and it was obvious what the tactics was. Matt Cash. Get the ball over the top. Expose that space in behind. And they did it time and time again. And because Lick Victor Lindelof doesn't have the pace required to cover that space that Shaw might leave behind, it's a double whammy. The two weaknesses of those two players, Shaw and Lindelof, exacerbate each other's. In the same way that that's what I thought Lindelof's and Maguire's partnership has always been. 
but it got exposed and it showed fundamental weaknesses inside that area. So Eric Ten Hag will be looking at that and knowing that and seeing that. But I'll tell you what, it's exactly why he signed Lissandro Martinez, right? Martinez are going to start in that left centre-back role. He will be able to cover those spaces in behind if Luke Shaw or Malasia gets caught up the pitch. He'll be able to step up and go into them aggressively and have the ability to recover the space in behind. We can't play with him at the moment. Now, if you're looking at real weaknesses in that second half, I mean, look at that rain. Literally monsoon season. Uh, so that's why you can't look into the negatives of the performance, I don't think, too much. But I've got to be honest. De Gea stuck on his line for that goal in the second half. Set-piece weakness. Still there. Still needs work. I don't know how the hell he coached that out. I, honestly, I, I don't know how we get rid of it. I'm not a set-piece coach. Uh, but De Gea was kind of stuck to his line. What's that to do with the pitch? You could use that as an excuse. But De Gea's got to be more dominant in that area. And that's ultimately how Aston Villa got their equaliser. Uh, in terms of, well, I've really got to mention it's negative. I really have to. Wan-Bissaka came on in that second half. And Wan-Bissaka just does not look comfortable. And he hasn't looked. I'm not, not just talking about this little second half. For, what was it 30 minutes that he played? I'm not looking at just that. Wan-Bissaka is just not comfortable. He hasn't looked comfortable inside this Ten Hag system at any point. And I don't particularly think he will be. Right? I'd be very surprised if he can sort of change that, switch it up, and all of a sudden become a far better player. I just don't think that will happen. And I, I, maybe I'm wrong on that. But I think for his career, for Manchester United's system and Ten Hag's work, I think it's best it suits all parties if wan and we find a move for him this summer. The low is so much better inside that role than him. Now, uh, I saw Rob Dawson from ESPN saying this about uh, Alex Teller, saying that he hasn't been given the opportunity. But I'll tell you what, the only reason that Alex Tellers has been playing in... Look, because he's played as an emergency left centre-back. He's played as an emergency defensive midfielder, basically, today. Why is that? Because he's left-footed. I think it's quite obvious. Basically, Eric Ten Hag is using... Unfortunately for Alex Tellers, he's using Alex Tellers to try and mimic how Lissandro Martinez would play. And the idea that you've got a left-footed centre-back there. So how would you play alongside somebody who's left-footed inside that role? You make different runs if that player was right-footed. That's pretty much the only reason that Alex Tellers has been playing, and he shouldn't be playing. Alex Tellers should be sold this summer. Made that abundantly clear as soon as we signed Tyrell Malasia, and kind of before we signed Tyrell Malasia as well. But obviously, the second half, Zidane Bell came on, everybody came on, but that pitch really didn't allow ball to be played. It was cutting up like a madness in that second half. Aston Villa were playing a little bit dirty, the intensity of the second half certainly increased for sure. And it went back towards more uh, what I suppose you would expect us to see in the Premier League next season. But in terms overall, I don't think Ten Hag is going to come out with that furious. I think he's going to be pretty angry at the fact that Man United have given, gone there and thrown away a 2-0 lead. That's just something that you should never... If you're, if you're a good, solid team in football, you don't do that. But we weren't in that second half. It was a, there was, until the point where all the team was changed, and obviously everything changes at that point anyway... Gerard made the changes at half time, exposed the weakness, and we didn't have a response on the pitch. We kept exposing it and exposing it, and ultimately that was a great goal by Leon Bailey. But Lindelof shouldn't have allowed him to reach the point where he was there, and he cut inside on his left foot. And Martinez, I would have presumed, would have been able to defend that situation a little bit better. But in terms of what I expected in this preseason tour, I expected more of what I saw today. I expected. Good moments, fleeting moments, but then also you kind of get put back into reality with like, oh, what the fuck was that? And I don't think we've really seen that in the first three games. We've just seen things getting built and built and built. But it's why you don't get carried away with anything you see in preseason. It's why preseason exists. The shit like that can happen in preseason. You go, right, that's not going to happen again. Learn from it. Move on. I think what we learned today is that Shaw and Lindelof, that can't happen as a left-hand side partnership. The weaknesses of both players exacerbate each other's. And given how Ten Hag's Football will be played, and the fact that we will be so proactive, we will go for, we will go for all the overlaps. That space is always going to be there. Malasia, I think he's played himself into our starting left back choice, in my opinion, and I think Martinez. Well, I know Martinez is going to be our left centre back, but I don't think those weaknesses that we saw today will exist in the game against Brighton. Certainly not to that level. But overall, happy with it. Fred playing in that role. What do you think about that? Bruno, for me, quietly has been very impressive so far in this preseason tour. Luke Shaw, I think we saw positives and negatives of his game today, which Ten Hag will definitely take into account. But as I say, overall, three wins and a draw from the tour, I think you take that. And ultimately, it didn't really change that much, that goal going in. It was a very similar, it wouldn't have changed the performance we saw in the second half. But it's a shame that we're doing that.
And it's, it's a shame that it ends like that, but I'm still happy with it. And I think Ten Hag will be happy with it overall. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. The preseason tour is done. There's still more of the preseason to go. They'll return to Manchester. Next week, we're going to be seeing pictures of Ericsson and, uh, and Martinez. We're going to see those two in action against Atletico and Real Vallecano. I'm looking forward to that. But take it easy, everyone. Let me know what you think.